Okay. I, hello, everyone. I'd like to introduce you to Noel Everhart, who um, he, he's been working on his yellow jacket, and I've always admired this kit, and I've had a keen interest in these. It, it's kind of a retro kit in a way in that it goes back to the basics and it makes a affordable, um, high, a nice flying affordable glider that you can hand launch on a bungee cord. But I wanted Noel to talk about his yellow jacket. And um, so I have Noel here to, uh, to talk. Go ahead, Noel. Well, thanks. I really appreciate this opportunity to chat about this. It's, it's uh, this plane. It, it, yeah, as you mentioned, it came from a Sonoran Laser Arts in Fountain Valley, uh, uh, Arizona. And it was Greg Norsworthy that introduced this to me. He said, gee, this is, uh, this is kind of the latest thing. This is what the Europeans are doing. And I think it's, uh, uh, it's been a copy of, or a variation of one of, uh, what's his name back there? The, the, uh, the guru back at MIT that does all this. Oh, but, Durella? Mark Durella? Uh, yes, Mark Durella's. I think it's the takeoff on one of them that he designed. And but, it's a two uh, meter, right? It's two two meter, right? Two meter, and it's the the uh, fuselage. The body is is built of balsa. Uh, the wing, as you can see, is just all uh, all rib, and it's um, carbon fiber. I just have the big old lab dog that's nudging on me that wants some attention. So <laughs> she goes away. Go away, Maggie. All right, so where was I? And yeah, carbon tube. Um, do a close up on, on the and, next. Uh, and built up tail feathers also. So, oh yeah, that, that kit. I tell you, I was really impressed with this kit. Really impressed. The uh, the precision of that laser cutting is to me was just incredible. And here here's a detail of the. Uh, of the spoiler that, uh, that there's a servo as you, that you can see mounted right next to the uh, center with the, the root ribs. And um, he included a little label or marking. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> I just had a visitor of people checking up on me but uh well anyway you can see you know, the detail of of the uh the construction does that servo how does it is it attached to this to the spoiler by a wire it, it doesn't seem to have any no attachment. It, no it just has that little yellow arm that that swings up 90 degrees and just pushes the spoiler up in this picture here the the spoiler has no uh, return spring on it, so it it doesn't fold on completely flat. So I will be adding a little Z wire torsion bar to that to pull it down flat. Okay, but just just the arm flapping up is enough to get the spoiler to kick. Oh in. yeah, no, it just pushes it up quite nicely. It's just no issue. So the the uh, the servo just is taped down to the bottom. Okay. Um, yeah, here, here's a detail of the, of the the wing and the construction, and and um, the the main spar is the larger tube, and the uh, the smaller tube in the center is the spar for the wing tip. <clears throat> now, each of those um, the Rips. smaller smaller rods that oh. uh, mount across that that joint have pre-drilled laser, laser pre-drilled holes that align that. And the one thing about this kit that I really have to give them credit for is that it's all self-fixed straight. I mean, it's incredible. And, and I just stuck it together. There is no, there is no means to, um, to adjust the dihedral at all, just stick it together in locations where they are, put those rods through the, those pre-cut holes. And, and uh, when it was all together and completed, that the alignment 
or the dihedral elevations were dead nuts right on. I, I couldn't believe it. I wasn't expecting that. So, so no, I noticed it doesn't have a D tube. Do you think that was just considered overkill or for this light of glider? I, it, it's just probably, it probably would have been added weight. Yeah. The, the leading edges just uh, was a, I don't know, was a two, two millimeter leading rod, rod right? that, that stuck on there. So that could, that could bump a fence pretty easily <laughs> and, and survive. Well, well I, I don't know about that. I'm not about to try it. I try to avoid it, but uh, it's, okay. it's, it holds its shape real good and it has a lot of strength. All right, here's a picture of the uh, the fuselage with the with the beam. The fuselage is all built of plywood, and uh, same way with the tail. The uh, the stat is not attached to it, of course. Uh, but uh, yes, it's it's just all um, plywood formers and and side panels. Side panels do have a couple of. Uh, there are two side panels on the uh, on the outside vertical that that are plywood, thin plywood to give it strength. So I think was it the next picture gives a few more details of the. Uh, oh, small, oh, that was. Well, maybe we're going back a little bit. I mentioned that this is a bungee launch plane. And one nice feature about that is that the, the hook is, is adjustable. Those little marks that I have in there are for the, the center of gravity. And uh, by, by the designer spec, um, he suggested moving that, that hook about so far in front of the uh, CG, the forward CG. That's where I put it, never change it, and launch just fine. So no, I, I I'm looking at the finished work. Is that is that a fiberglass? Um, like no, 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 it's just all balsa, and, and it's just painted it, like that. I uh, yes, it's just sanded and then painted. Okay, so there's nothing tricky. No, uh, I like to not to use, you know, the the shrink film on that. I like to to paint it. I could fill it up and shape it and correct the shape. Yeah. So there's the inside view of the uh, of the tool hook. It just um, loosen up that nut and slide it forward or back. It's, it's very convenient, very easy, but very solid, very strong. You know, how many times has it been such a hassle to change a tow hook? And that's yeah. just such a simple thing. Yeah. Oh, I'm very happy with that. So here you can see a little more detail about the uh, buildup of the fuselage. And uh, I used two magnets to, um, to, to attach the, the hatch cover, works well. The, uh, the battery is actually, you know, just in front of the, it's in front of the servos. Those look like just double A batteries. Is that in the loop? Double double yes. A batteries? Yes, they are. It's just a little simple four pack. Uh -huh. And uh, you can see by there's a little piece of foam there. If I added no weight, but if I need to shift the weight back a little bit, I could cut the foam or push the battery back a little bit. And the receiver sits forward. And uh, again, I, I added no weight at all to this to to let it fly <clears throat> oh, that's great. i originally installed that oh i'm sorry i originally installed the receiver with the housing on of it but after a, a few flights it took the housing off and i don't know how it was a few grams but a part of an ounce but the weight of the hull taking the weight of the housing off of that receiver just enabled the plane to fly perfectly. It was just very, very nice. Good flutter. 
one thing I do know is I, I always take my housing off, but I have this kind of big shrink wrap, clear shrink wrap that I just shrink wrap around the whole thing. It, I pretend like that protects it. It, it doesn't always, but it, it makes well, me feel good. Yeah, I usually do it. It puts some of the shrink tubing around it, but I took it off out in the field and there's nothing around. I just so, left it that way. And okay, that well, fix it. <laughs> so here's the tail. The tail, the, uh, the stab is removable. It's just held on by two screws and the, uh, I just have a simple right angle bend in the control rod to hook into the horn. So I can take those two screws out and that's, uh, that's a little thin plywood plate to, to clamp the, uh, uh, the stab down to its mounting. And the, in this design, the, the nuts for that, uh, for those screws, I think they must be about number six screws maybe, but the nuts are embedded in the, uh, uh, the mount for the, the, the stab. The stab mount is made up of a few layers of balsa, which are glued together. And the next to the top of layer, the balsa has a notch out for the... Uh, for the nuts. Yeah, those, those nylon nuts. Oh, okay. And what, what did you cover it with? Uh, this is a, well, the ultralight, what is the stuff that comes from Germany? Okay. Uh, it's a senior moment is catching up with me, but. Hey, hey from the ultralight from Germany is enough for us. So it's there's the way. I don't believe, I think you have a finger on, on the scale or whatever the opposite of a finger on the scale is. Yeah, so that, that's the all full up flying weight with the batteries and everything ready to go. And that's lighter than the DLG that we built. You know, my DLG, I think, is 17 ounces. So this is uh, about 15 and a half ounces. So. And with and two meters 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 too, which, so it must thermal like a champ. Uh, yes, it, it thermals quite readily. If, if I recognize the, the thermal and flying through it, I'm not the best thermal catcher, but... Uh, I've had it skied out every time I've taken it up to fly. Wow, that's great. And here's, here's my carrying package for this. I, I got this tube. Uh, I got the tube from FedEx office and uh, with the stab removed, uh, it fits in that tube quite nicely. And I just folded over some foam core, piece of foam core election board that I had laying around in the garage. And the, the pouch, I elected to make the pouch out of this uh, foil covered bubble wrap that it got at, uh, at Home Depot. This was something I learned from uh, Sean Sharif about. Uh, he made covers of that. And one of the reasons is uh, he, he said it, it reflects the sun off so that the problem with some of those exposed bubbles that they can concentrate the light and, and perhaps uh, shrink or damage or alter the, uh, the shrink film. So I got a roll of that and, and I made up three separate pouches that are just stacked together and held with a little bit of Velcro between each pouch. And, uh, but these pouches, um, I decided to use, not use, I actually elected my wife to help me sew them together. There you see, I just put it on the sewing machine and sewed it, you sewed those together instead of using glue because the glue and tape and staples and all this other stuff really didn't work very well, but I was surprised so, that the stitching worked very well with that. So this is a close up, you see the top layer and then the little layer underneath those two layers are 
are, are stitched. We didn't pre-pop any bubbles or anything, just put it under the machine, clamped it down and pushed the go button and it uh, sewed, sewed it very nicely. I'm really pleased with that. And were the wings, you had the wings came in three parts. Does it separate like that? The wings? Yeah, or is it one long wing that- Oh, no, 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 three wings. And from the first picture you see that they separate by the colors. The, the two red long sections separate. So if you back up one section, you I see this. I see this. It's right at yeah. the top, right? Um, okay, so that's the three wings. One red, two red. Right, right. Okay. There's two so red sections and one white section. And, and there's, is there a joiner box where the break is or are they, the tubes fit in each other? Or? Uh, there's, uh, there are aluminum tubes that fit into each wing section. And then there's a carbon fiber rod that connects between the, the two wing sections. And they're okay. just two two carbon fiber rods in in each one in each in each wing half that's great okay and i'm going to get back to where we were okay and th this is how i store my planes i it's the garage the I just have two uh, or a couple of long gas pipe rods strung along the rod, uh, the garage. And these pipes are just simply hung by a, a hook screwed into the beam in the ceiling and some, some of that cheap chain that goes around the, uh, the pipe and hooks, hooks onto the, the hook and I just rest all that stuff up there. So in the middle, you can see the uh, uh, the wing packages there, and the uh, the tube with the with the fuselage, with the orange thing hanging down. That's the fin in in that tube. So it's quite compact, and this packaging is 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 quite uh, quite durable. You know, I don't have to be terribly careful with it with all that padding on the wings. It's been good and and uh, again that the tube itself came from the FedEx office and, and it's yeah, strong I, and cheap. I learned that from you, Noel. I I think every time I I kind of skip on doing a decent package, you pay for it with repairs that you you need to do because you didn't make a correct you know a wing bag or or fuselage tube. So I, I really appreciate that. But yeah, I, I, I strongly recommend that, that this wing, these, these wing sleeves are, you know, was inexpensive to make and quite easy to do it actually. Same way with that, the, the tube for the uh, fuselage. All right, well, no, thank you very much. Any, any last words to, uh, to add? Uh... Well, boy, I I have nothing but good things to say about this kit and and the plane itself. Just it's a fantastic flyer. You know, I'm not a competitive flyer. I just like to go up and put it up and see how long I can keep it up. You know, if it's I'm talking about the plane and the, it's I'm um, I'm very pleased with it. it I finally found something that flies better than my general lady. <laughs> That's right. That's great. Okay, well, thank you so much, Noel. I'm gonna um, turn off the recording. Thanks, thanks for having me. Okay, here we go.